Harvard Divinity School. Uses and abuses of power in alternative spiritualities. Implications for spiritual care of patients and communities. April 28, 2023. My name is Olivia Jenkins, and I'm here with Melissa Casado Farbman and Petra Pavarti Meet to present to you our independent research, The Guru at Your Finger Fingertips, an exploratory study of spiritual leadership on social media. To begin, we invite you for a moment of reflection. So you can close your eyes if you'd like, or if not, that's okay. Uh, but think about who is a spiritual leader that you admire and what qualities do they hold? They might be charismatic, confident, or calming. And if you close your eyes, rejoin us and keep that admirable spiritual leader in mind as we continue in the presentation. A little background about us, Melissa, Petra, and I are in the same cohort at Sophia University's PhD program in transpersonal psychology. And in our conversations about uh, the spirituality of evolution and uh, our many research interests, we decided that there was a lot of common observations as far as the trends that are happening in social media and so this study explores the rapidly evolving culture of a new generation of self-identified online gurus who use social media to create a community of spiritual seekers to share their content and services. Our working definition of spiritual leaders are those who motivate and, and inspire spiritual seekers to reach their personal or spiritual transformation goals. Uh, these qualities may include high self-awareness, self-esteem, or effective communication. And we found that there is very little research about spiritual leadership specifically on social media and online. So we hope that with this pilot study and to continue on after this to, in, to fill that gap. So our focus questions include, what is the digital presentation, content, and engagement style of the self-proclaimed spiritual leaders or influencers? What offerings and services are the online spiritual leaders providing? What qualifications or credentials do spiritual leaders have to guide others on their spiritual quest? And what are the potential benefits and dangers associated with participation in the online communities that are centered around the spiritual leaders and using their services? For methods, we used netnography, which to assess the trends drawing from published content on 15 profiles across three different social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Included in our criteria were these spiritual leaders had to self-identify as a spiritual leader, coach, teacher, influencer, mentor, or guru. Uh, so they were not a representative of an established or organized religion. They were very active and engaging on social media, so they were not a fan or dedication page. And they had at least 10,000 followers, but some had hundreds of thousands of followers and millions of likes and views. And Melissa will take over to talk about our profile themes. Thank you, Olivia. So after an analyzing 15 of the profiles, we found five major themes. Content, aesthetics, services and products, qualifications and interactions. So for our theme aesthetics, we found three minor themes. The first was a minimalistic and spiritual profile page. So this kind of included soft backdrops, plain colors, clothing with not a lot of stimuli, and some even had more of a kundalini yoga appearance with white linens and white hair wraps. So very soothing. Then we had a captivating type of aesthetic. So this was quite the opposite. We had some profiles with psychedelic backdrops, bold um, capturing colors, maybe strong makeup and clothing, textures, patterns, 
and bold personalities, lots of movement. And third, we had a casual and natural aesthetic, which you would find the people maybe in their house clothes, some sweatpants, they're in their cars, filming videos, coming back from the gym on their way to appointments, and sometimes maybe even under a tree in their backyard. For content, we had three different um, sub-themes. We found that there were mental health guidance, um, such as maybe talking about depression, anxiety, relationships. We even found people ex expressing um, serious topics like suicidality in the comment section. We found uh, spiritual topics and divination. So that included topics like astrology, ascension, awakening, ESP, uh, ESP, meditation, and even yoga. And finally, we had success manifestation and even business guidance. For the interaction and engagement style, the themes we found um, were, I found this to be interesting because I found that these spiritual leaders had different uh, personalities in um one personality was kind of a teacher, which was a classroom style. One person even had a whiteboard and they were explaining certain spiritual concepts and theories. We had the big brother type of personality, which was kind of like a friend. So this type of leader was more compassionate, even saying things like, you know, I'm here for you. We're all going through this and I want to help you through this process. We had authoritative. So this um, type of spiritual leader, how I would explain it, they would be more into the camera, lots of eye contact, very um, um, kind of more loud and saying, you know, this is important what I have to say. This is what's going on in the world. And you need to listen. You need to listen up now. You need to change your life. Um, we had theatrical, which that was more, um, those profiles were kind of funny and, um, you know, colorful and engaging. And then we had the insider expert. So this person was kind of like, I have the inside scoop. I know what's going on on the DL. This is what's happening in the spiritual world. You should listen to me. And then to continue, the last two themes we found um, that most of the spiritual leaders that we analyzed offered some type of products or services. Some were monetary and some were free. Some monetary services, such as healing sessions, um, some went up to thousands of dollars. Some had maybe workshops or courses on meditation. There were also even retreats, merchandise. So what we found when we, we would click on to these people's profiles, it was kind of like this one-stop shop. You could go download a meditation that they have for you. You could go register with them for a retreat in Bali. You could um, buy their mala beads that they created on Etsy. So there was a lot of um, different products. Um, and they would also um, advertise their products on their social media pages. So for the qualifications, this was... Um, difficult because when you think of a spiritual leader, it, you don't get a degree in that, right? It's not like I'm going to go to school um, and get this degree or um, some, you know, so it was kind of challenging to see what qualifies someone to give all these services, to give all this advice, all these teachings. Um, what makes them different than me going to my neighbor and maybe getting advice. So some of the stuff that we found were um, professional training. Some of them um, identified as coaches in the mental health field. Some um, people had personal awakening and traumatic experiences that led them to feel um, inspired to help others. Some of them were healing and healers or psychics. 
Um, others came from lineages of healers, psychics, and teachers. And finally, we found that some people posted photos of them discussing um, their teachers of different countries, and they were students. So um, the next slide we have is observed and perceived um, benefits. So um, for the benefits, we have inspiration and motivation. So when we found in the comments that a lot of people would post just beautiful feedback to their um, leaders, like, thank you for this video. This allowed me to get up in the morning today. Thank you. This reminded me to meditate today. Um, some of them honestly were just entertaining, you know, they were funny and they were, um, outgoing. Um, some had great information and knowledge, which, um, even though some of them maybe did not have, um, they weren't a teacher of some big guru or, or they weren't a student. They had a lot to share that was not in the mainstream, um, some participants in the comments, um, we found that they felt relaxed by watching people's videos. Um, some of their videos normalized maybe spiritual experiences that other people had, but they felt uncomfortable to share with their family or their religions, uh, organizations. There was a lot of support and advocacy that these spiritual leaders represented, um, there was a lot of specifically in mental health, as I mentioned, um, a lot of people saying, um, you know, we're here together to kind of fight some of these mental health issues. And finally, there was a good amount of community and engagement that we found in the comments section. So we would find people, you know, sharing their own experience, especially in YouTube, um, they shared their experiences with each other. They supported each other. They, you know, gave each other sometimes just like feedback. And some, sometimes the spiritual leader would also comment on their comment section and support the people that are um, their followers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, Petra. So Petra now is going to share um, the observed dangers. Yeah, thank you so much, Melissa. Um, so some like while the benefits definitely superseded the dangers, at least in our small sample and what we saw in the comments, um, there were some we, we very like you know considerable um dangers that we found um some of them are um first of all there since there wasn't a lot of um access to the qualifications and some of these uh leaders they promoted themselves as being able to help with trauma or with other serious mental conditions um and it is often we found that there was like there could have been like a misleading representation of their services and qualifications, which online, you know, in, in the different videos and posts, it might not be a big deal, but it, it definitely is uh, considerable when it uh, comes to like them offering their services and like vulnerable populations that, that are, for example, going through serious trauma, um, will go to them for help. Um, in that same um, token, like there is also like a lot of pseudoscience and um, also cultural appropriation because often there is like a confluence of like different like practices, uh, knowledge, um, and often there is no sources cited or um, references to where the information comes from, which um, often like takes things a out of context and often it is not perfectly accurate and even the the followers they, they are we've seen quite some comments where they requested sources because they themselves were kind of wondering where does that actually come from <laughs> um and in terms of cultural appropriation which is like also difficult because often these practices that are promoted they are sometimes promoted as um 
something that the person, the, the spiritual leader invented themselves, but what they really did, they, they took a few different practices from different um, other traditions and put them together, added their own thing and um, sell it as their own practice and their own special trademarked um, process. Um, and then also, you know, it can lead to uh, specific, like to serious um, consequences because a lot of these spiritual practices, they have like their purpose and they have their process. Um, and then something that is also very serious, and we have heard that in, in other of the wonderful presentations here in this conference, um, there's often like in this community, there can be a toxic pos positivity, which is like, oh, just get over it. Um, like, you know, just believe you can do it, which is has a good part but then there's also the part which is if you're going through some a, a serious uh, process of like grieving or you have you're struggling with a serious condition or an environmental uh, problem um it can lead to victim blaming and feeling bad about that you're not able to feel like great right now even though you're going through something really difficult um or it can lead to on the other hand to spiritual bypassing which is like something that would be really require professional attendance, like you know, a serious mental health condition or even a physical um, illness. Um, it might go unattended because the person is maybe told by their spiritual teacher or because they see a video that you know it's it's just about meditating more or like you know uh, considering to think themselves out of the problem. Um, and then. What we found also, which is very interesting, is that there's something called a zoom effect, which uh, there has been some studies about that, like really like correlating like how our perception of our own bodies has changed, like especially for the younger generation, being exposed constantly with our own image through zoom and social media and also like how um, we see constantly like the the modified images really because it's not often the, the real image of others and that can lead to like um definitely like a reduced self-esteem and like you know actually like um the plastic surgeons they have reported that a lot of their cases i think it was like 42 percent in one study um of the clients that they have now they come with like you know with the pictures basically of like how they want to look like to be able to be you know looking good on social media so it's, it's something serious to consider. And then in general, there is also like something like, which we would call like spiritual consumerism, which is this kind of idea that you need, in order to be spiritual, you need something. Like you need like this latest, like, you know, yoga outfit, or you need like 50 different tarot decks, or you need, you know, to go to my retreat or the service, like, you know, you need something <laughs> in order to be enlightened or, you know, whatever it is. So it's also something really serious because often you know followers they might not have the resources or also like sometimes we don't need so much things and then um as a takeaway like because it's it's an exploratory study so we are like we just started it to us it's a real it was a real interest because it was intriguing and we didn't find any research about it so um and we found that we were actually surprised that there was actually so much interesting and um, and also like inspiring, um, you know, elements in, in what was presented on social media. Like, I think we all had like more like a, our perception was different when we started the study. So we got transformed in the process. Um, so what we found is really like something really exciting happening that there's really a new kind of spirituality developing in our face really like right in front of us and it's evolving rapidly it's super, like extremely creative it's diverse and it's also very entertaining so if you can like we haven't uh, provided any like material like for you video material to watch because of the time but it, we would invite you all to like you know look at some of these like spiritual leaders it's very interesting <laughs> um and then to make this like online forums or this platforms for spiritual communities more safer and um also to have a better idea what is their actual impact on the individuals that are 
presenting like that are spiritual leaders and also on the followers that are consuming this information and on society as in general like on on our image as uh, what spirituality is like for example um it is necessary to to start the conversation have an open conversation um with multiple disciplines involved and continue research because i think it's really interesting or we came to the conclusion it's a really interesting field um and we want to know about the potential benefits and dangers and how we can prevent the abuse of power in these specific platforms um and then that includes creating ethical guidelines and peer support networks and we were really excited that there is already like a, a beautiful movement like the the Associ uh, association for spiritual integrity they already have done a lot of work in that direction so and we're, we're happy in the future hopefully to collaborate with them um and then you know to help maybe even the spiritual leaders to develop the skills that because often of they might have just been catapulted into this position of being a leader um and they have often they might be lacking like some basic skills that are learnable in a way or that could they could be supported um one of them definitely is intellectual humility like the ability to like kind of reconsider you know our own image of ourselves and like admit that we nobody is like infallible and we can all learn <laughs> from each other um and then also like to to have like you know to be sure that there's ethical conduct in these online platforms and here are some resources which i mentioned the the first one already um and some references and then last but not least we want to invite you know collaboration and like questions because it to us, it to us it is really exciting um to to learn more about this so one of the things that we want to do we, we're going to collaborate with our own university with sophia university and we're going to start like a series of podcasts where we want to invite some of these uh, new spiritual leaders and know more about what motivates them what are their needs what are their challenges and we would also like know more about what actually motivates the followers what what is their experience um and we would also like to see if there's any like correlation between like personality traits and things like that so to us that's all really exciting and like thank you so much for listening to us and like we're glad to like continue listening to everybody else because it's been really amazing so far. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sponsored by the Program for the Evolution of Spirituality. Copyright 2023, President and Fellows of Harvard College.